All right, hey everybody, this is Raleigh, and today we are talking about running. And what I want you to understand about running um, is that it's going to take years to develop. Most kids do not have experience running with proper technique. And just because they can move their legs really fast and fall does not mean that they actually understand how to run. And running is more of a mental engagement than it is physical. And so this is why the more a student can focus, uh, the better they're going to become at running. So don't think that you can just physically develop running. You can't just run more and get better at running, as, as simple as that would be. You're, there's a lot of very subtle technique and coordination movements that are required to become really good at running. So here we have just, I want to make a clear understanding that there's a difference between sprinters that you see in the Olympics where they start down in this loaded position versus gymnasts who start in a stand position. So how they start is going to change the shape of the run. And really to understand running is you have to be in a constant state of falling. So if you're starting in a down position, okay, I'm just going to read this, but when starting in a down position, the sprinter must go up away from gravity's pull. I, I see that I spent gravity's wrong uh, while still falling as much as possible. There must be a synchronization in rising and falling simultaneously. So starting in a down position actually requires um, a specific set of techniques to keep falling while you're rising. And that's why you'll see sprinters keep their chest down and drive more with their knees because they're trying to keep the fall happening while they're standing up. And that has its own coordination and technique in it. Versus if you're just starting in a stand, then all you have to really do is just start falling. This is why you'll see an aggressive lean and knee drive. The sprinter tries to stay in this aggressive fall position as long as possible, forcing them to drive their knees and have their feet more behind them at the beginning of the run. Okay, the other thing that the gymnast is going to be doing is trying to get their feet in front of them so they can put them on the springboard. I'm going to come out of this so you can see my cursor or my pointer. Okay, so something I want you to be aware of is... Um, Okay, this lean action happening right here. So we have to be falling. And so if you look at the foot, the center of mass has to be past the foot to keep the fall engaged. And this is really what keeps the run going. You're falling and then you're putting your foot down to catch your fall. And so I just want you to be aware that the falling is the key aspect to sprinting well. And if you start in up position and you're not falling, but you just drop your chest, you'll see this a lot of times where kids will just lean with their chest forwards, but their whole body's not actually falling, then they can't actually accelerate. Okay, so just going back into this. Okay, so the difference between, again, a sprinter and a gymnast. So the gymnast starts in the up position so that they can get to be, um, so they get to begin by falling down. So, you kind of have front entry vaults. You, you're trying to stay in the up position, and the gymnast must get their feet in front of their fall to hit the springboard. So you have this fall, and you got to get your feet in front. This is why you are going to see more of a shin lift and knee drive and ankle drive to get the feet in front of you to pull the chest up when you're trying to jump to a springboard. Versus back entry vaults, you actually get to keep falling because you get to do a round off. And so the round off wants the fall to happen. So based off of the type of entry of vault you have will determine if you want to keep falling or if you need to pull the chest up and get the feet in front of you. Front entry vaults uh, have a more difficult transition from the run, which is a fall, to getting the feet in front because it's actually countering what the fall is doing. And so just understanding the difference between that. A back entry vault is a round off onto the springboard and then usually a back handspring or something onto the table. Okay, so there's four phases of running. There's the pose, and this is the um, this is the body um, when the body begins to put weight on on the surface. I don't know why my sentence is off there, but whatever. So when the the pose is when the body begins to weight the surface, and that's very important to understand that when you are weighting the surface, your center of mass needs to already be over your pivot point. In the fall. This is where the body pushes into the surface while falling. So this is after the pose. Then you have the stride. This is where the chest pulls back and the legs separate in order to move the center of mass as far as possible forwards. So the stride usually is going to happen with both feet off the ground and it's really about moving the center of mass. The step. This is where the body contacts the surface. Now you need to understand that the step and the pose are not the same thing. The step 
Okay, the flight phase needs to carry over and move the center of mass past the point of contact before the body weights the surface. And so here you have the stride happening, and that needs to actually carry past the step so that when the step happens, you're not actually weighting the surface, but you're passing over the foot. Okay, and then I'm gonna, we're going to see this. So you have the runner's pose. There's a fall position happening. The center of mass, somewhere around the hip area, okay, is over the foot. The whole body is passing the foot, essentially. And that's where the contact and the weighting of the surface happens. The fall. Now you're actually pushing through the surface with the foot. The knee is starting to drive. The shin is starting to drive. But there's an engagement. The arm positions are based off of Usain Bolt's arm positions. So if they look funny, it's simply because that's how his arms looked. The stride. You're actually leaving the surface. And so your center of mass is being pushed now. And it's traveling. Okay. The step. While the foot is contacting the surface and we see the center of mass, the most of the body is behind the foot, you're not trying to weight the foot. What really needs to happen is you need to pass over it. So from here to here, you actually have to be able to pass over, over the foot. And that's where the weight happens. So while you're touching the ground here, you're not actually weighting. You actually need to travel over the foot. And that's what makes running difficult. And you're going to see that. And so then there's the fall. I'm pushing through the surface. I'm making my, tra my center of mass travel past this point that I'm stepping so that it actually goes into the pose. And I guess I didn't put a pose there for the next step. But I'll back it up just so you can see. So um, I'm in my pose. I'm falling. I'm stepping or I'm, I'm pushing. So there's my fall. There's my stride stepping and I'm going past it. So from here to here is really the energy. So it's really I'm pushing through here, passing through, passing through, trying to get to there. So this is from here to here is what I'm pushing to. And these are just shapes that have to happen in between to get back to there. Okay. The people that can do that really well are going to be the most successful. So running drills, step, pause, step marching, running. It's building it up. So it's just doing one step at a time, pausing, and so that you can see the correct positioning of the legs. Do they understand how to use the right leg, their left leg? Then getting marching so that there's more rhythm involved and then building it into a run. The expectations. So you have um, various challenges, we could say, right? There's wall running where you put your hands on the wall and you move your legs. There's running in place where you're just trying to find the coordination in place. There's running over a springboard usually you want to build up a surface so you've seen if they're slowing down on the springboard so is the run even and smooth and does it accelerate over the springboard because that's where you don't want to slow down and can they keep moving past it or do they start slowing down before the springboard and then just run down the vault runway as fast as you can they're, we they're called run bys and you just run past the springboard keeping the sprint going as fast as you can arm swing bottom bounces these are really good to see if the arms are actually coordinated and if the body the core is staying engaged separate from the arms so that the body moves all right, so the high knee um, exercise. So there, the idea of uh, high knees is really about bringing the knee up to the hip height or belly button height. And we want the picture on the left where the shin and the ankle is in front of the knee. Um, the reason we want to teach this is because it is more important that the student understands how to get their feet in front of them from the run as they transition to the springboard. So students that learn to run like the image on the right, which has the foot underneath the leg, they tend to struggle to get their feet in front of them on the springboard and they end up le leaning on the springboard chest down and it affects their vault. So while they might start off running funny because the high knee positioning in a run looks kind of silly uh, it as actually a benefit to their transition from run to springboard to vault. But there's the difference in the high knees. Really, neither one of them are right or wrong. The one that has a on the right hand side with the smaller angle in the knee, um, that's really, really good for driving the knee if you're leaning and falling and you got that that angle fall happening but um, it's not going to get your feet in front of you for the transition. So here's some things with the high knees. You can do just step, pause, step, and just get them comfortable doing one leg at a time, understanding the positioning that you want. 
And what you're looking for with anything is setting a standard that there's this expectation, that there's a standard basically saying, not an expectation, but a standard saying, um, this is what I'm looking for and we need everyone to look the same, at least putting effort in the same direction. Then you can march them so now they're kind of connecting these movements, but it doesn't have to be fast. And then you can run them through the high knees. And there's options, which is the expectation. So there's single leg high knees where they pick one knee up and the other leg is straight, or then you can do double leg high knees. Okay, so the bottom kicker. The bottom kicker where the image on the left is the one we want, where the hip angle is open and um, the chest is up, not leaning. The bottom kicker on the right, you're going to see that there's more angle in the hip. There's a shape change in the back, and this causes the leaning of the chest, which is what we really don't want. We don't want the chest to be leaning as much as we want it to be more upright and the body to be move, pulling the center of mass. This is really just for coordination purposes um, at the younger ages. Uh, you're not really using it for transitional steps yet because you're just trying to develop coordination and body movement and control. So at the younger levels, you're just trying to hit the shape and make it look correct. It's not really translating into improving the run um, right off the bat. So again, you can do step, pause, step as a standard, going really slow, making sure that they're getting the right um basically the right standard, and then uh, marching it and then running it. You have single legs and you have both legs. So those are the expectations you can have. The single leg stuff is a little bit more coordinated because you're trying to have one leg bent, one leg straight as you're you know, weight transferring. However, it's really good to develop that coordination with the single leg. So both legs might seem easier in the sense of moving because you don't have to think so, as much but if you're not thinking as much then you're really not running accurately so getting them to think is actually important okay so deer run so both of these images just imagine they're in the air they're not on on a surface if you look at the one that has the chest leaning forwards that's really what is wrong when the chest leans forwards that back leg is not going to drive as high um, even though the legs are the same, but the chest leaning forward is wrong. It doesn't actually pull the center of mass with you leaning your chest forwards. So the one that's on the left hand image with the chest more vertical, that is actually the one we want in a deer run. And the idea is it's basically like a leap, just one leg is bent. And so it's really finding a timing in the air. A little bit of the um, flight phase in the run is what you're kind of looking at here and it's really just about getting the legs to hit at the same time with the chest pulling backwards almost to open the hips um, simultaneously so you can actually do deer runs um, in a crawl form where they start in this position on the ground their chest would be down they put their hand on the floor and then they kind of stand up and and pull their chest up and backwards as they drive a leg um, then you can kind of march it so not thinking that this is going to be really fast, but it kind of has this pause, you know, deer run, deer run, deer run, instead of like deer run, deer run, deer run. So there's this rhythm that's kind of just a slower rhythm. Um, some things that kind of mix up in the expectations of deer runs, so obtainability. Obviously, learn the deer run first. There's a lot of coordination involved, but then you can do like a vertical skip, and as you land the vertical skip, then step into a deer run, or you could do a deer run, and as you land the deer run, then do a horizontal skip. Um, a deer run is really like a leap, essentially, with a front leg bent. Okay, so horizontal skipping. The image on the left, if you look at where the hips are, that triangle that's connected to the legs, um, it's more vertical. And that's really what's going to be helping you pulling your center of mass horizontally. The image on the right has a pike going more on the chest is leaning forwards. And so that means that the center of the mass is in front of the body. So it's not actually being pulled. And what we want to do is actually pull the center of mass. We don't want to be behind the center of mass um, because then essentially we're pushing the center of mass. So Horizontal skipping is more about keeping the chest vertical and getting the hips to pull the center of mass than it is about the fall and the lean. You have some options there. You can do slow skips. So step, pause, step, just to break it, break it really down to here's how a skip works, one movement at a time. Then you can go a little slower in the movements, which is really speeding it up to slow, and then you can move a little bit faster. Horizontal skips is obviously the easiest expectation but then you can increase the difficulty by doing it from a knee 
which would be not even standing up, but actually just driving off the ground from a knee and trying to get your body to move forwards. These ones, you don't really connect. There's a lot of dragging of the foot on the ground, but it's really about using your hips and your chest appropriately. So vertical skip. So you look at the image on the left. If you were to put that at an angle, that's a pretty good um, running position if there's a lot of fall involved. Now, what we like about the image on the left is the knee is driving. So the knee is driving vertically. Uh, the foot is kind of under the knee. Uh, the chest is up. The arm is driving up to the sky. So it's important that you understand that the vertical skip is about getting the arm and leg to drive vertically. The chest needs to stay vertical, but there's an open hip. If you look at the back leg, it's still driving behind the body. The hip is still pulling the center of mass, and that's important, versus the one on the right where the foot is underneath the leg. The knee's not actually driving that hard. The arm is not that high. Those are some kind of pieces that you're looking for to say, see the difference. You want the thing that's the, the shape that's going to be driving everything vertical with the hip open, pulling the center of mass. There is a slight travel forwards, just not a lot. So that's basically how high can you vertically skip. You can do this with straight arms because then you learn to use how use your arms to pull your body. So you can do it with an arm swing and get your arms straight as well. Again, standard step, pause, steps. So you can slow everything down, then you can go to slow, and then you can speed it up to fast. You got vertical skips, and then you have vertical, full, vertical skips from a knee. So if you want to make it harder, go from a knee. So the single leg cycle. So you got one, two, three, four. Okay, so this is built off of what we would call A skips, but the idea is that I'm standing in this position. The weight is on one leg, my leg that is in the air is in a position where my shin is driving forwards, my ankle is forwards, and I go to place it on the ground. And so it doesn't really matter where I place it on the ground, but the key is that when I place it on the ground, I'm not weighting the foot. There's still no weight on the foot. So we want to place it on the ground. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to move the center of mass. So we're trying to get this center of mass to move here. So it has a little bit of a travel. It's from there to there but there's a couple shape changes in between and we're trying not to weight the foot until that happens. So we're the back leg that is behind the body, okay? So we have this leg, it's up, it goes onto the ground, but we haven't weighted it yet. We're gonna travel over that leg as fast as we can. So by the time we weight the foot, we've passed over it. And we're trying to do it aggressively enough that we keep the fall into this position. Now this position doesn't matter, it's actually just catching the fall. We're really just trying to learn how to be here and get to the fall. So the leg just is catching you to stop you from falling to your face, but the idea is that transition and getting them comfortable feeling that transition of when am I supposed to weight my foot, okay? So again, slow things down, step, pause, step, then you can speed up to just a slow speed, then you can try to go as fast as you can. Um, the purpose that needs to be understood is you're trying to feel the late block. So a lot of people will put weight on their foot here and that ruins everything. You cannot put weight on your foot here. So if that's what you're doing and putting weight on that front leg in this position, you're done. Game over. You're not learning how to run. It's here to here and it smacks the ground, bam, but you don't weight it. You just hit the ground and then you travel over it. Okay. You travel over it. As fast as you can, you keep falling. So from here to here, that's when you weight the foot. So you've got to travel and push off that back leg and get to here as fast as you possibly can and keep falling. Okay, it's important that you understand you got to keep falling because from here to here really is where you're going to start pushing off the ground to keep the body moving. Okay. So vault running. So applying this to the actual event vault. Now, you really only need 12 to 14 steps in a vault. Um, it will change depending on the age, height, speed, acceleration, but you're looking for 12 to 14 steps really. And then when the athlete becomes more mature, they can really choose and decide if it's 15 steps or 11, you know, whatever, as long as they're making the vault happen. But just know the more you run doesn't necessarily mean the better the vault. Um, and you don't need to do less running just because you think it's cooler. Um, but the best way to build into it is to always start with one step and then try to vault with one step and then vault with two steps and then three and earn your way backwards to, to, to 12 or 14. 
if you start at 12 or 14 and then try to adjust, they aren't going to have an understanding of how the body accelerates. So start as close as possible, move one step at a time, adjust their steps as they learn to accelerate, and then you're going to move into a position where they'll be able to start um, and actually accurately hit those 12 to 14 steps. Acceleration. So acceleration has to happen. So from the moment they start, they need to be increasing in momentum and they actually need to be accelerating towards the springboard. So by the time they hit the springboard, they should be moving as fast as they possibly can because now they have to conserve that energy and take it with them. So the coordination that is uh, happening as a standard, the standard is basically what are we measuring, right? We want to measure the steps. We want to measure the acceleration. We want to measure their coordination. Okay, and you're going to see this in arm and leg timing. Are the arms and legs in sync? Is the core shape getting pulled along or is the core shape falling and trying to push the center of mass? So what does that look like? Then you want to look for that smoothness. There should be a smoothness in the run. And then is the run straight? So you got to actually have to look straight on down the vault runway to see if they're actually running in a straight line because if they deviate their run, they're actually going to get a deduction uh, at the lower levels not so much at the upper levels. You're not going to see that, but at the lower levels, that, that has to be straight. Now, the purpose is to create as much momentum as possible and carry it through the skill. So the run is trying to accelerate to create momentum, and you're trying to conserve that energy and carry it through the springboard into the vault table onto the landing surface. So to do that, everything has to really be in sync and in rhythm, and you have to be able to use your energy efficiently because that springboard oftentimes will stop or slow down the athlete due to because they're either afraid of hitting the vault table or whatever reasons, but it's at the springboard that everything just decelerates. They lose their coordination and everything just goes to down, down the drain. So really developing this and working on getting through the springboard to the surface, not even, it doesn't even matter what skill they're doing. Let them just do straight jumps or run overs, but getting all those components dialed in is going to determine how great of a vault they really will have. Okay, so here's some running flaws. So stutter steps on the arm swing for the vault. You oftentimes see that when they go to swing their arms for the hurdle, they're going to start stutter stepping before that happens. And so you solve this by keeping their arms moving into the arm swing for the hurdle. And so there's a transition. I'm running. I have to hurdle to the springboard. Before I get to the hurdle phase, I will stop moving my arms because I'm preparing for the arm swing. And by doing that, I start to stutter step. Stutter stepping also is because of uh, not knowing their steps and knowing the distance, but oftentimes it just has to do with they stopped moving their arms and they're doubting themselves, so they're trying to readjust. It's too late. You shouldn't be readjusting at that point. Okay, so slowing down as approaching the springboard. So this often happens um, by the majority of people, and you solve this by building confidence with runovers or run bys. So the importance of understanding that you have to stay or keep accelerating through the springboard, not up to it, but through it is a key factor that needs to happen. Um, if you're too close or too far away from the springboard when you hurdle, you solve this by adjusting your starting distance or adjust the length of the hurdle. So you don't necessarily need to move the springboard. The distance of the springboard will determine how fast or slow you need to be to get from springboard to table. So if you're a slow vaulter, you usually move the springboard further away. If you're a fast vaulter, you move it closer. But you really want, in the early years, everyone to try to adapt to becoming a fast vaulter and then adjust it later on. So if you're too close or far away from the springboard, don't move the springboard as much as move their starting position or get them to adjust the length of their hurdle because they might be hurdling too big or they might be hurdling too small. And that hurdle distance is key. And it really actually is, is in rhythm or in sync with the acceleration they create. So if the stride becomes too big and slows the athlete down, this is actually uh, pretty common for somebody trying to learn how to run properly. You need to actually solve this by having the athlete take smaller steps because we want the body to keep falling to generate the or to create the acceleration. So if an athlete tries to do a perfect run when they're not ready because they don't have the acceleration, those strides with their foot in front of them will actually hit the ground early and slow the athlete down. So it's okay to say, I want you to take smaller steps, but fall more, but you got to get that acceleration going. Just understanding that they will try to run with bigger steps and eventually it will slow them down. Here's a couple of videos you can, um, well, I guess you can't really click on them because this is not a PDF, but I'll put a link, um, 
couple links to these videos to watch. Basically, it's a YouTube. You type in A skips or B skips, and there's a link there. You can watch Usain Bolt's running technique videos, um, and they're pretty pretty interesting. Uh, vault is just tumbling on steroids. So if you get the run figured out, the hurdle, all the little nuances to getting onto that springboard, the rest of it is really just learning how to tumble, and that we're going to talk about later, which is tumbling. So there you have it. That is all we got um, for now. If you have questions, as always, make sure that you ask somebody, talk to them. But the more educated and informed you can be, the better your results will be as well um, because you can actually help people learn by navigating these types of problems. So there you have it. Running. I'm out. <laughs>